Hi boys and girls, it's me and here we are back again with our next installment on the EC425 Emerson. And I wanted to show you to start out with the, uh, this is the finished, finished radio cabinet. And it's just a waiting for me to get the, uh, the chassis done. And uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with the results. I've even went ahead and I've installed the new, the new uh, reproduction dial cover that I came, got from Retro Ray Repair Old Mark in Auburn, Georgia. It looks great. And I've installed a one-piece handle. <laughs> I was able to, uh, at, the, at the Raceway Park English Town Swap Meet, I actually found a Bakelite version of this radio. And here's the, uh, let's see, how was this on here? Something like that. I could probably glue that back together and, and use it, but I told the owner, I said, let me, let me see if I could find a, a home one. I didn't want to have to try to glue that back together, but... That was what was on the radio, so now we have a nice handle as well. And uh, overall, let me show you, just to get some good light on there. You can see the top, it's got a nice little patina on it. It's not shiny, but it's not dull. And overall, I think that the color looks pretty good. Let me get some light so you can see this side a little better. So. I think the uh, I think the owner of the radio will be uh, pretty happy with uh, the end result. I'm happy with it. So anyway, so next we got to uh, move on to like I said, we got to move on to the chassis. Okay, well here's the chassis again. We haven't seen this since uh, episode one, I think. And this is where we installed our new filter caps. These two guys right here, and it uh, made the radio play. A whole lot better than it was when I got it. Anyway, at least we could actually hear stations, understand people talking or singing. But the next thing is, is that these caps right here. There's one. See, there's two. There's three, four, five wax capacitors in here, and uh, I want to change those out. So we're going to do what's called a shotgun replacement. So what I mean by that is we're just going to replace all five of them. We're not even going to mess around. We're going to start with some uh, brand new ones. Okay, we're going to start with this guy right here. And uh, this one, I kind of flipped it up in the chassis a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. And it says right there, molded paper capacitor. On the left it shows you the value in microfarad. So this is a .02 microfarad capacitor and on the right it has their 400 and then the, the letters DCWV which stands for DC working volts or direct current working volts 400 volts so we're going to change that out but first we have to go find a replacement for stuff so I've got the capacitors up here we need a 0.02 and then this drawer I've got 0.022 microfarad caps and these are all at 600 volts I can't uh, I gotta get this in the light so you can see it a little better okay let me turn around so you can see it okay now it's got the letters on there well, modern capacitors will have this kind of coming on here. You see this is a 223J and then 630 volts. This ends up ultimately being 0.022 and it's a little bit more than 0.02 and it's a 600 volts rather than 400 volts. But this will work just fine. So what does the 223J mean? I'm asking. I got a little I had a cheating chart over here. Let me uh, get the camera adjusted. Here's my little reference chart in case I forget. Now this, the cap was 223J. This is down here at the very bottom, 223K, 0.022. Now the only difference between J and K is, as I think, is just the type of uh, material 
that this guy is made out of here. Some 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 of these are made from polystyrene and some are uh, polyester and there's different uh, different types. But it is that value, that 0 .022, so we're going to use that. Okay, now here's the 0 .02 capacitor that's soldered into the circuit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these clip leads. Now rather than put heat at the stake at the bottom of the base of the tube and try to work it out, I'm going to show you a little bit, a little bit easier way to go about it. I'm going to actually go up about... Uh, maybe about a quarter of an inch or so to where this thing has been soldered in there. I'm just going to leave like a little pigtail. So that's one side. I bend this resistor over a little bit to get some access. There. And I just clipped out the other side. So now we should have two small wires coming up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use those wires to uh, actually solder the new capacitor onto that. Okay, now we have our, our new capacitor we're going to install. But first, what we want to do is we want to prep it to solder. And what I like to do is I take a blade. Now you can either use a single edge blade like this with a handle or you could use something maybe like this. This might be a little bit safer. And then what I do is I just run over the top of it like this. And as I do it, I kind of spin the capacitor around. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking a small layer of metal, real small, and what that is is I'm just kind of cleaning up that wire. And that way when I go to solder it in, it'll help the solder to stick to it better. Now you folks out there that do plumbing, you know that you have to clean up all your joints on your copper before you solder else it may not stick right well I like doing this the same way and then what I'll do is I'll also use this and I'll go into those two little stakes in here I don't know how well you can see that and right where I cut that off and clean that up a little bit too so that the original wire It'll help it to stick on that as well. Now the reason why I do this like this, you know, why I don't take it off the, oops, the tab of the tube socket is, is that more often than not, if you're going to start digging around in there, there's a, there's always that chance that you could break off the the leg of the tube socket by trying to get a wire off the thing and then what ends up happening is now you got to replace the whole socket. Now you're going to be spending a lot more time on something you don't really have to. So now the next thing is I'm going to take this capacitor here. I'm going to reuse that insulator here that they, they put on there. There's a long one on one side and a shorter one on the other. can't find it. There we go. So I got that on there now. And what I'm going to do is it's an old trick. They used to actually do this in the 70s. I usually take a pair of needle nose and I'm going to twist maybe a loop and a half into it. They used to do stuff called wire round. Maybe some of you folks that remember wire wound stuff I just kind of make a little pigtail coil and what we're going to do is just slide that over the pin where we cut the wire off and we'll just put one on both sides and then solder that in there and then out that should hold that on there and make a good contact. Okay I got that one uh, more or less soldered in there now and what I like to do is afterward I kind of give a tug on the close to where I solder just to make sure that I've got a good solder joint and it looks like for the most part looks like we're good to go so one down four to go alrighty 
as you can see all the oil capacitors have been taken out and we've replaced the other four so all five of those guys are brand new now we still need to double check all the resistors I also played the radio by the way to make sure everything uh, this is here the radio sounded it sounded a little bit better so we still have a little ways to go yet I have to check the resistors make sure they're within tolerance and the other thing I want to do is I want to put a uh, change out the line cord and uh, the original line cord's kind of tired on this and plus I want to put a polarized line cord on here alrighty I've checked all the resistors in the radio and uh, basically they're all good they're all within tolerance except for this one I've got these alligator clips on right now that's a 470,000 ohm or a 470k resistor and my meter I don't know if you can see that let me get the light on there a little better that is way out I'm supposed to be 470 that's almost 700,000 ohms or 700k so we're going to go ahead and replace that I have one brand new one left <laughs> Alrighty then. There's the new 470K resistor. Alright, so that's it for today. So I've gotten quite a bit done and we're, we're starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel. We only have four more things to do and then we'll, we'll be able to dump the radio. We want to put a polarized line cord on it. We're going to add a fuse. We're going to have to do probably a mild alignment. I don't think it's going to need a whole heck of a lot. Then we're going to fabricate it back for the radio. So we can just uh, kind of keep the back end covered. So until then, hey, take care everybody and uh, thanks for watching. Bye!